All right, so I've just wrapped up another Final Cut Pro video for my YouTube channel, and it's time to sort of button up the Final Cut Pro library and get it off the editing hard drive that I'm using, which is the internal hard drive on my 2022 Mac Studio. I've got a few other YouTube videos on there as well, and it's a two terabyte drive, and I'm getting down to about 220 or so gigabytes of free space, so it's time to free up some space so I can make room for more Final Cut Pro YouTube videos on my channel. All right, so we're in the old edit bay here. I just finished up this Magic of Multicams video for my YouTube channel, so we'll take a look real quick at Finder. I'll open up a new window here, and then I'm gonna use the Mosaic app to get this sort of laid out the way that I want to. One more real quick. If you're curious about this app, it's called Mosaic and it is available in Set App. You can subscribe to Set App and access apps like Mosaic so you can set up your Finder windows uh, in a really simple and easy to use way. I really love this app. So we're going to take a look real quick at my movies folder because I store everything on the internal hard drive of my Mac Studio and you can see down here we've got 231 gigs of free space out of two terabytes total on this hard drive. So we've got some work to do to free up some data. First thing that I'm gonna do is show you how I button things up in a Final Cut Pro library here in Final Cut Pro. So we got the magic of multi-cams, and we can see here that I've got about 45, 46 gigabytes in the library. Now this is going to be render files because I store all of my media in Finder. Uh, I don't store it inside the Final Cut library. So you can see here I've got the magic of multi-cams, of course, all my media which includes my A-roll. I've got some audio in here with scores and sound effects. Uh, I've got some content like GIFs that I used, story blocks, uh, uh, stock footage that I used, things like that. So all we really have to do in Final Cut Pro with this library is clear out the render files because I'm done with the project. I don't need to be using this 46 gigs of free space and when I offload this project to another hard drive, my big storage hard drive, I don't wanna unload 46 gigabytes that I'm not gonna use or need. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we're clicked on the Final Cut Pro library, and then we'll go up to File, and then choose Delete Generated Library Files. I'm gonna check Delete Render Files and hit All, and just on the random chance that some piece of optimized media or proxy media was created, I know that they weren't for this library, but I just checked those boxes just to be doubly sure. So we'll hit OK, and we'll watch this drop from 46 gigs over here down to much less, down to 40 megabytes. So quite the space savings there. I have another video on my channel on how to sort of like master your hard drive space by managing your libraries in Final Cut Pro, and I've got a lot of comments about people that have freed up hundreds of gigabytes of used space on their hard drives check that video. I've got a link down in the description if you want to learn more about how to manage your hard drive beyond just deleting generated library files. So this library is now ready to go as far as being transferred goes, but we look back at my free space in my movies folder and I'm up to 277 gigs. So I freed up some space, but there's still quite a lot there that's taken up. And you might be saying to yourself, Okay, well, I have multiple Final Cut Pro libraries that probably have render files in them. Does this mean that I'm going to have to click and open every single one of those libraries and go through this process of deleting generated library files? Yes. <laughs> For some of you, yes, you will have to go through that process. For those of you that are curious about whether or not a third-party app could help you with that process, I've got just the answer for you. So I use an app called Final Cut Library Manager to remove generated library files in bulk from multiple libraries all at the same time versus going into each and every single one in Final Cut and deleting them one by one with all of your libraries. Now this video is not sponsored by Final Cut Library Manager. It's an app that I've been using for about a year and I've really grown to love it. I do have an affiliate link down in the description, so definitely check it out if you're interested in picking that up. And if you look here in Finder, I have a lot of videos. A couple of these I haven't edited yet, but like this Film Convert Nitrate video, my Apple Studio Display review, the Timeline Index video I made, my AirPods Pro 2 review, all of these have Final Cut Pro libraries with render files in them that I haven't deleted yet. The first thing that I want to do as I'm getting ready to archive these projects now that they're done is I want to delete all those generated library files. But again, I don't want to go to each and every single one. Go to project files, go to FCP, open it up, delete generated library files, go to this one, open it up, 
go into Final Cut, Delete Generated Library Files, I want to do it in bulk. So let's take a look at this Final Cut Library Manager app. All right, when you first open this app, it can be a little overwhelming. There's a lot of kind of complicated information here. There's all these hard drives. I actually have to deselect a bunch of the hard drives when I open it so I can just look at the hard drive I'm working with, which is my internal hard drive, Macintosh HD. And we get this breakdown of all the Final Cut Pro libraries this application is seeing on that hard drive. And the thing that you want to look for is this green bar. If we look up here at the top, we can see these columns that stand for optimized media, proxy media, optical flow render files, and then straight up render files. And if it's grayed out, it means that there aren't any proxy media or optical flow media that you can remove from that Final Cut Pro library. You also get a readout of all of the storage that it's taking up. So if we look at my timeline index video, which I think I finished up last week, you can see here we're seeing this green bar, which corresponds with render files. And it's showing that I have 58.4 gigabytes of render files that are in this library. Now that's space that I can save. Same thing here with this AirPods Pro 2 review, there's 21 gigabytes. And then this one, a short that I did, uh, has four gigabytes. Not a huge space savings if I remove it, but I'm gonna remove it anyways because that's just the process that I wanna go through. So I'm gonna go through each of these and select, even though this is just 15.9 megabytes, I want to remove everything I possibly can. So I'm going to choose this. I'm also going to get rid of the um, optimized media. That's not really necessary to keep in there. So let's go ahead and just go through, start seeing what kind of space we can free up here. It's only going to be roughly 100 gigabytes. But again, this is what I want to do as I prep a video for being offloaded to uh, an archive drive. So we've got all that taken care of, and now we can clear everything out. So we're gonna click down here on the bottom right on this broom icon to get that process started. And then we're gonna go ahead and delete completely. I'm very confident that what I'm deleting is not gonna cause me any problems. If you're a little concerned, you can choose send to trash, and that way you can review it in the trash before you delete them. But I'm just gonna delete them completely because we're good to go. Okay, so now we need to quit Final Cut Pro and continue cleaning, so let's go ahead and do that. And it's going through, and now it's cleaned up all of that stuff. So let's switch back to Finder, and we're going to see that our storage has gone up to about 360 gigs, so not quite 100 gigs. So now what I need to do, now that I've got all the generated library files all cleared out using Final Cut Library Manager, I wanna go ahead and transfer all of this, these finished projects to my offline edit drive. And that is a Pegasus R8 with 24 terabytes of storage. It has 21 terabytes usable because I have it in a RAID 5 configuration. A lot of you might be like, why not just use RAID 0? We can talk about that in the comments. So I'm gonna to go to my uh, YouTube folder here under my company name. And I've got all these videos here just a ton of them that uh, I've wrapped up all the way back to 193, which is film convert nitrate 16 millimeter. So I need to update these and I've got a few videos that I haven't edited yet. This anxiety about VCU, which I don't think I'm gonna make into a video. And then this adventure to Wichita video, which is a vlog. And I think I'm going to make a video out of that. So I'm gonna leave that on this uh, internal hard drive. Now there's something special I need to do with this film convert nitrate video. So I'm going to save that for just a second, but we're going to go ahead and copy all of these over to this drive, which has 1.41 terabytes of free space. So as this drive fills up and gets closer to capacity, I'm going to need to offload some of these projects that are much older. I'm going to need to offload them to my deep archive, which isn't, isn't connected to my computer. These are a series of hard drives that are in a storage shelf in my studio, and I can offload some of that stuff so I can free up some space on my online archive. Now I have an online archive because I'll often have to go back to more recent videos to pull different assets, media, B-roll, whatever it is, and I like to have it accessible on the Pegasus 2 R8. 
so I can easily grab that stuff. So we've got 600 gigabytes to copy over. It's gonna take about 20 minutes. And this film convert nitrate video I need to archive and we have to do something special with that. We have to synchronize this version to the version that's on this hard drive. And to do that, we're gonna use an app called Chronosync. Now Chronosync has a version of its app called Chronosync Express that is also available in Setapp. And I'll have some information about Setapp and I'll link to another video that I go into what Setapp is. But Setapp is a platform where you can subscribe monthly. I think I subscribe for $14 a month and you have access to like 240 something apps like Chronosync, like Mosaic, and many more. So I'm gonna open Chronosync and get this started. And it's a pretty simple process. What Chronosync does is it basically analyzes one set of folders and files and compares it to another and then synchronizes any differences from this set of folders over to this set. Because this is the newer or more current version of this uh, folder system, I want it to sync everything from here over to this other drive. So to do that, we need to create a new synchronizer task. And this is pretty simple. We're just gonna drag this into this window. And then I'm gonna drag this one into this window. Now the type of sync I'm gonna do is I want whatever files and folders are in here to be mirrored over here. I don't want it backed up. I want it mirrored so that they're identical copies of each other. So I'm gonna choose mirror left to right. I'm gonna synchronize deletions and then have them delete immediately. Now there's a couple settings that we have to go into here in options and we're gonna to go to custom and then we're gonna choose dissect. And the reason that we do that is because the Final Cut Pro library is a package. If you right click on it, you have this show package contents option. It's a package file, so it has stuff inside of it. If you actually do show package contents, you'll see it's got all this stuff in here. Well, Chronosync needs to be told to look inside this Final Cut Pro library file so it can sync everything inside it to everything that's inside the, the equivalent library over on this side. I do have another video, it's an older video, so it's a little awkward and kind of weird, but it's an older video that goes into how I use Chronosync to synchronize different, different projects and folder systems. All right, so we've got all that taken care of. Um, this is being synced, mirrored left to right over here, and I've got the dissect packages option enabled. So we're gonna go ahead and start that sync. And this will be happening simultaneously while all this other stuff is copying over to the Pegasus R8. All right, so Chronosync synced all that stuff up. Looks like nothing really uh, went down, just a few megabytes of information, uh, probably because I opened the Final Cut Pro library recently, and this one had an older version of the Final Cut Pro library. All right, so if we switch back to Finder, we've got about 18 minutes left of copying. So I also have some YouTube shorts that I want to kick over to the archive, so I'm going to go ahead and drag that over. That's gonna start moving. And then I have some member videos here that I can get rid of. Making the thumbnail since minute. Okay, so that one I can get rid of as well. And we'll drag that one over. All right, so all of that stuff is gonna copy over. It is a little bit slower because I'm doing them all simultaneously. Usually you wanna do them one at a time, but you know it's doing its thing and I'll come back when it's all done. So this is finishing up the 680 or so gigs that got transferred over. All right, so everything but Adventure to Wichita is ready to go and I'm actually going to change this to two question mark because I don't know what episode number it's going to end up being. So before I delete this stuff here, I need to sync what I have on my Pegasus R8 to a duplicate Pegasus R8 that backs all of this stuff up. That's right, I have two Pegasus 2 R8s, both with 21 terabytes of available space. There's the main drive and then its backup drive. And I need to tell Chronosync to back this stuff up to that backup drive. So let's go ahead and open up Chronosync. Get that all going. All right, so you can see here I have this saved backup operation, and it's my R8 to R8 backup daily. This is something that I have scheduled every night at 1.30 a.m. for the main drive to back up to the backup drive. But because I just transferred some stuff, I don't want to wait till 1.30 in the morning for it to be backed up. I want to do it now. So I'm going to go ahead and sync all that stuff. And again, it's going to be 683 or so gigs that it's going to transfer over to that backup drive. So this is going to take a hot minute, maybe another 20 minutes or so for it to do that backup. So we're going to wait for it to do that. 
So once this sync is done, then I'm going to be able to delete everything from my shorts folder, my YouTube members folder, and then the main folder here of all my main channel videos. And that's going to free up quite a bit of space on the internal hard drive on my Mac Studio. All right, so our Chrono Sync is all done. All that stuff is synced from the Pegasus 2 R8 to the backup Pegasus 2 R8. So now I feel safe to delete some of this stuff off of the internal hard drive on my Mac Studio and not worry about losing anything. So I'm gonna start with my shorts. I've got this transferred over and backed up, so I'm gonna delete that. Then I've got this YouTube member video. I'm gonna go ahead and command delete that to get rid of that. And remember, I'm keeping this Adventure to Wichita video because I might edit that uh, during my holiday break, but I've got Film Convert Nitrate all the way through AirPods Pro 2 review. I'm gonna delete those. I'm gonna keep the magic of multicams because I haven't published that video yet. And on the off chance that there's an issue, something I have to deal with, I wanna be able to, uh, to be able to access that project. So I won't be archiving this until maybe another two or three videos are completed. So we've got a notification here from Clean My Mac, another great app that's part of SetApp. This video is not sponsored by SetApp, but I'm using in this video three apps from SetApp uh, to manage all of my data and stuff. It gives me this quick shortcut for emptying the trash. So I'm just gonna hit that and we're gonna save about a terabyte, it looks like, of space. So we're going from like 600 something gigs of free space to quite a bit more. So we've got about one point, oh, still going, one and a half terabytes or so. When I look at this YouTube folder, we can see here that it's taking up about 333 gigs. So now I'm feeling like we're back in a good position with regards to my internal hard drive on my Mac Studio. I've got one and a half terabytes free, so that paves the way for this video to be captured to the hard drive and uh, start editing that as soon as it's ready to go. This whole process took probably over an hour to do, so it is an investment of your time and resources. So be ready for that if you're gonna do some extensive data management like I do. Obviously, if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments and let me know. If you have some workflow ideas that might improve what I have going on, I am all ears about that. I always am looking to improve my workflows. So if you have any ideas, please let me know down in the comments. Other than that, I think that's gonna cover it for this video, everyone. Until the next one, I'll see you all soon. Don't forget, keep chopping that broccoli.